So at this time, turn the new book to page 205, A Friend Like You. And we have it together. Let us sing. This life is filled with sorrows and troubles here below. We often made to wonder.
church say amen. amen. Let your church say amen again. Amen. If you need God to hold your hand, you need to say amen. amen. Because God is good. Amen. And all the time, God is good to us. we serve a mighty good God. A mighty good God. We should always be happy to let other folks know just how good God is. Amen. If you're here this morning, you have breath in your body. You have reason to give God praise this morning. Amen. 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 At this time, we want you to set all other things aside mm -hmm. this morning. Amen. We're here for worship. Yeah. Amen. 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 We are here to worship who? God. God. We're here to worship God. Amen. So let us make sure that we give Him our all. Amen. 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 He doesn't need anything short of all. Amen. Because right. He is worthy yeah. of praise. Amen. 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 It's good to see each and every one of you here this morning. God has been good. Yes. He's been good to all of us because we're all here. And there are so many who didn't make it this far. So we have everything to give to God. Because it is by His power that we have our very being. Amen? Amen. This morning here at Grand Avenue Church of Christ, where God meets with His people. We want you all to be encouraged. If you're not a member of the body of Christ, we encourage you to do so before life pass and eternity meets you face to face. Amen? Amen. While the blood is still running warm in your veins, you have an opportunity Amen. to do what God has commanded you to do. Because afterwards, how you go down is how you get up. And we don't want anyone to be lost. God doesn't want any man to perish. But that all come to repentance. This morning, I would ask for you to pray with me as we open up for worship service this morning. Um, I don't know if there are any announcements. If they are, I'm sure they will come up here just a little bit. But at this time, let us uh, go to our Heavenly Father for a word of prayer. Merciful God and Heavenly Father, we come to you with our heads bowed and our heart humble. Father, we are so happy to be a part of this day that wasn't promised. We thank you. We, we want to give you all the glory and all the praise. So, Father, whatever it is that's causing us any type of distress this morning, we just ask that you... Allow your understanding to comfort us that we lay it down and, and just offer up the praise that you so rightly deserve. Right. Father, we ask that you be with those who would be here this morning, but for whatever reason they weren't able to make it. Father, we just ask that you strengthen them that on the next appointed time that they would be able, really willing, <clears throat> and ready to come out and worship you in spirit and truth. Father, for those who are in media land who may be viewing this today, we just pray that your word finds fertile soil in their hearts. Amen. Whether they be a member or whether they be someone who's just looking for you, that they may find it in your word and ask the question, what must I do to be saved? Yes. Father, we pray that all that we do and all that we say be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Be with us as we offer up songs of praise. <laughs> We offer our prayers of, of consolidation and, and, and compassion. We ask that you be with us in all that we do. Keep us safe and help us to safely share your word. Yes. Father, we ask these things because we know that it is your will that your will be done. Mm -hmm. That is our will to do your will. Amen. It is in Christ Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> All right. Um, is there any announcements this time? Okay. There is a ladies' retreat scheduled. Uh, the annual ladies' retreat is scheduled for the 21st of is that August? Yeah. September. Okay, it's the 20, uh, 21st of September. Uh, registration uh, package will be available soon. 
and I think they're going to be going out the 22nd through the 25th. Hmm. Okay. Grand news, community service ministry. Items needed to meet uh, July goal are pocket tissues, hand lotion, snack bars, trail size items only, uh, trial size items only. Uh, we'll meet Wednesday, uh, 8-3 at 6 p.m. to bag items, and Saturday, 8-6 at 9-30 to deliver. Assistance needed. So everyone who's available who can, come out and give a hand. Anyone interested in joining the tech team working with the screens, please see Sister Jamisha Gaines, uh, your contact directory if you have any changes or updates. Uh, text uh, 819-0877 or complete the form located in the bin outside of the front office. So if your contact information has changed, uh, check the bin, fill out the form so that it can be updated in the bulletin. Uh, grand news continue. Remember all the sick and shut in, all that have lost loved ones, and any that ask for prayers in your thoughts and prayers this past week. Sister Nicole Jones is asking for prayers. Her number is posted. Um, uh, this afternoon, uh, well, this morning, we're going to have a meeting after service. So those of you who are uh, interested in the personal evangelism and the Keeping the Save Save programs and the groups that we're, we're trying to get started up, uh, please meet after uh, service this morning. It will be brief. I won't keep you very long. Uh, but I want some. Uh, I want to get some information and give you some information. Uh, let you know what we what we have and what you're willing to. Whichever group you're willing to to work with, uh, we want to get you get your information. Amen. Amen. At this time, it's all the announcement. I'm going to turn it over to our song leader and let us praise God with all that is within us. Amen. Amen.
That's Matthew 25, verses 1 through 6. And the Bible reads, There shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took the lamp and went forth to meet the right door. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom coming, go ye out to meet him. May the Lord have a benefit here of readers and doers of the word. And we go to heaven, Father, in prayer. Next song we come from page 343. In the next voice you'll hear Brother C. Shaw, a minister of Grand Avenue Church of Christ. Yeah. Page 343. Have yeah, it together, Brother C. It won't be very long till this part of life shall end.
thank the Lord for allowing us to assemble ourselves together. Amen. We might worship Him in spirit and in truth. Yeah. For those who are visiting with us to know that we are happy to have you with us. And we just thank you for thinking about us and coming to see us. i tell you one thing. It's just, it's just a, a blessing for all of us to be alive today. Yeah. about ten virgins, we already know where we're headed. Because there are some people in the Lord's church today that are not going in the same direction as many others are going. But we need to go. We need to be ready. Because God wants you and me to be ready to see what His Son has prepared for us in heaven. He went to prepare a place for us. Amen. And uh, if he, he said, if you had known my father, you should know me as well. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Amen. Now, at that time, at what time? At the time that these ten virgins didn't have everything that they needed. So, uh, all of them had Something, but there was, I said these ten virgins, I didn't mean that. There were five virgins that didn't have everything that they needed. But there were ten of them. But uh, I want to say some things to us to let us understand that we are not all ready for do, to doing what God wants us to do. And I say that because I was once in the seat that other people have been sitting in. But I say to us that we need to know and understand surely that God want to keep us. Now we're going to come through that uh, 25th chapter and down to about verse number maybe 13. If not, then we will uh, let you know when we're going to close. But I do want you to listen to me real careful because morally good is the subject 
but religiously wrong. Morally good, but religiously wrong. Everybody needs to be right in the eyes of the Lord. Yes. We have come to serve the Lord. Amen. We have come that we might worship Him today in spirit and in truth. Yes. And we just say to all of us that the day is coming when we will have to give up this life. And be able to stay with God and rest with God in the end. But don't ever worry what God has promised God will give. Yes. What God has said he will do, he will do. Yes. And wherever you want to go, if it's where God is, you've got to work on it while you're here yes. on earth. Yes. You, can't just, you can't just get up and think that uh, today is a day and I'm going to enjoy myself. Let's put some time into serving the Lord. Yeah. Let's put some time into doing what God wants us to do. Yeah. And not do what we want to do ourselves. And let me please ask all of the members of this church. Let us get ready early enough to come out and help others pick up the spirit that they need to be in the services of the Lord. Amen. We need to do that because if we can, if we can uh, go to games and do all of that, then that's good. I don't think God is going to be angry with you because you didn't go to a game. But I tell you what he does want. He wants us to be ready when it comes time for he, Christ, and the Holy Spirit to meet us here. Amen. That we can worship him in spirit and in truth. Yeah. So, these virgins was waiting for the bridegroom to come. Let me tell you something. Waiting is good, but being ready when you wait. Be ready to wait on the Lord. And, and don't, don't wait too late. Do what you need to do now and make sure that what you do is here. In the Word of God. And I think that I think that one thing that I learned when I obeyed the gospel was one older brother said, Son, now what you gotta do, you got to not just carry this with you. You gotta use it. You got to use it. You got to read it. And you got to understand it. When you don't understand, there's always somebody God has near can help you to see what God wants you to do. They were waiting for the bridegroom to come. Well, as they waited, they didn't look at all the supplies that they was going to need. Have we looked at the supplies that God want us to have? I talked a little bit last week about people uh, laying their faith on the line. You got to lay it on the line. Because if you want God to do for you, do for God what he wants you to do. That's, that's the way I see it. That's the way I understand it. And I do the very best that I can for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, someone says that to be morally good is right. Well, it may not be because to be morally good is a good thing to do. But let me tell you something. You can be morally good and you can be morally bad. You can be a person that's trying to live the life that God wants you to live and get involved with somebody that is not more concerned about living the life that God wants us to live. And so all of us in the church, and, and when you meet members of the Lord's church, you ought to meet somebody that is like God. They got the spirit of God within them. They love him. They want the church to know that they love him. They want everybody that they meet to know that they are lovers of the Lord. And when you love the Lord, like Christ loved his Father, he was willing to give up his life Amen. with his Father to come down here to live a life so you and I might be members of the tree of life. Amen. Now listen, what went on is that they waited and waited until somebody made to cry. The bridegroom coming. The bridegroom coming. They all grabbed their lamps and was ready to go. 
But the foolish virgins didn't have enough oil to take that trip. You know what they did? They started asking those with them, around them. You hear me? Let us have some of your oil. You're not in sin when you pour out your oil in somebody else's lamp and you don't have light to go see where the bridegroom is going. You need the, the, the same thing that they needed. Oil. So they went off and they tried to find what they needed. But when they came back, when they came back, the bridegroom had come and those who were ready went with him where he was headed. Church, let me tell you something. We lag around too long and don't get everything that we need from God. You can't be given the right time. Now, to be morally right is simply to say that you have some morals that you try to live by. If you're not a cursor, that's a good moral to not have. If you're not cursing and if you're not drinking and gambling, those are good morals to not be fooling with. But then some of us get called off by the devil Y'all remember how they never did? When God let him work in the, in the heavens like he was working, he found himself in trouble and God kicked him out. Simply because he was not willing to let God be God. Sometimes people want God's job. Sometimes people want other folks' job. But there's a job for everybody in the church. Say it again. There's a job for everybody in the church. Got something else to tell you, too. There's a job for everybody out there. There are folk that don't even know Jesus. That's what he's talking about. We want to get that, that, that keeping the saved. Try to save your brothers and sisters that are slow for it. Try to save them and help them to understand that they need to be with God. They need to do God's will. You can't just lay his word down and think that you're going to go to heaven. That's right. I can't put my Bible down and say, well, uh, I'm just not going to preach today because I don't feel like it. Yeah. Your feelings it shouldn't stop you from doing what God did let his feelings stop him from giving his son. He yeah. gave Christ to us that he might give his life a ransom for our sin. And so I'm saying that there are, there are many folk that we need to share the message of God with so that they can come to know God and know what God wants them to do as well as you and me. We are living on borrowed time. We don't know how long we're going to be here. We just don't know. But it's one thing for sure. We do know that as long as we have breath in our body, we have time to get right with God. That's all we can say. We have time to get right with God. Religion is a system to come out where we worship God in spirit and in truth. That's what religion is. The religious life we live is to show other people that God is waiting for you and I to meet him in heaven one day. If we live according to his teaching. You know, Cornelius was an honest person. Cornelius wanted, wanted to know the truth. And he was doing all that members of the church should be doing now in the Lord's church, being members. But what happened, he didn't know the truth about God. And so we, had, we have to know for sure that you can be morally good, but religiously wrong. Amen, and we want you to understand that, that uh, morally good people are not guaranteed a place in heaven. Not a morally good person. It, all morally good, morally good folk are not guaranteed that they're going to live with God in heaven throughout the season. He didn't promise that. But what he did promise, that you and I, if we pick it up, blessed is he that heareth these sayings of mine, and do them. We got to do it. We got to do it. And once you do it, Know for sure God got it written in his book. And he will not forget that you're doing all you can. And so Cornelius was blessed to hear somebody tell him 
about the Word of God. And, and when, when, when we are asked to go and tell people about God, listen to what it says in, in Acts chapter 10. Watch it now. In Acts chapter 10 and verse number 1, these things, and I want you to see, there was a certain man called Cornelius. He was a good man. Morally good. I'm talking about being morally good. He was a good man. He gave much alms to the people. He recognized that there were folk wasn't as well off as he was. Yeah. But he was willing to help them because they needed help. Well, a lot of folk need help. How often do you stop to help somebody that you see is struggling trying to get where they're trying to go? Yeah. Church, I said it Sunday, I'm going to say it again today. These, our feet, our tongue, our ears, uh, those tools that God used to teach us the word of God. All right. Then he says, when Jesus sent the disciples out, he says, go into what? All the world. Mm -hmm. Now, you may not get to go to a foreign country, but you can go around here. Amen. A lot of folks won't do anything around here. and live right next door to people and don't say anything about it. I'm saying to us, we need to get busy because that's what God has blessed us with life. And then you remember Lydia? Morally good woman. But when she realized that there was somebody that needed some help, Lydia started teaching. And isn't that wonderful? She's a great teacher. And therefore, today that a great teacher. We have some good teachers here. Amen. And what we just want to do is to get out there. Uh, the pandemic shut us down for two years. Yes. And a lot of the folk that were very faithful don't get up in time to even try to do it. Right. And I'm saying, not, not just on Sundays. Yeah. That's things that we can do on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, right on back up to Sunday yeah. then. But yeah. we must yeah. be willing to show God. Do you not know that God, if, if, if it's God's business, we were sitting in there talking a few minutes ago. And there's so much hatred, so much yeah. anger. So many folk doing things to other folk that they don't like because they just don't like them. We can't afford that, that, that kind of spirit within us. Within us is the spirit of God. The Holy Spirit guides us into what? All truth. God wants us to know what's right. He wants us to know that if somebody is lost, it's not always their fault. Some of it is because we don't do anything to help them to come to know the truth. Amen, bro. And we, we need to teach people that. And we need to let folk, and don't, don't do like a friend of mine that was going out, we going out knocking doors and when I was worshiping in Dallas. And we had one of the greatest teachers, and he, was, he would go out on Saturday mornings. And he said, we're going to get together, brothers. That's what he said. Don't get together tomorrow morning. So we all got together. And he, we had different ones. We'd go to different groups. And he always had a lead man to help the folk that was going, these brothers that was going out. So this brother went up to the door and knocked on the door. A man came to the door. And, we came to teach you this morning the word of God. That door slammed so hard, boy, my ears were promised to be ringing now. But you know what he said? He said, no, I'm going to talk to you alone. You didn't try to embarrass him? He said, I'm going to talk to you alone. We, if you had been to those classes we were having, you wouldn't have made this mistake. We have ringing ears and you have ringing ears. He said, we come to study, to discuss the differences in what we do and what you may be doing that's wrong. Well, he knew what to say. We come to talk to you about God's word. Well, Benny said to us, he said, learn how to talk to people. Amen. If you don't know how to talk to a person, they don't want to hear anything you say. That's right. So come on out. Come on out because we are trying to pull the church back up like it should be. Amen. Many times. Many times there are folk that go into the grave 
not ready. Right. Don't that bother you? Mm -hmm. It bothers me. It bothers me. And I think that many times uh, we're just tired and we get involved with sports or in, involved with games or, or fishing or sh hunting and shooting and eating those rabbits. But I'm going to tell you something. What we really need to see is that God is waiting for you and I to bring souls and have their sins washed away in the blood. And it's in the water. You may not see it. You can't see everything, but one thing for sure, the blood of Christ is in that water when you go down and have your sins washed away. He came. He came that he might give his life a ransom for your sins and for mine. It's wrong to give people bad advice, but it's right to give them the right advice. Now, what's the best way to give a person the right advice? Let God do it. Amen. Take the Bible, Amen. his word. Use his word to tell other folk what God told us through the disciples, preachers, elders, deacons. We have to learn to do all of that because we need help winning them back. Amen. That pandemic has folk thinking that they're going to die. Well, you, you're going to die anyhow. Mm -hmm. But why not just stay with the Lord and get right? Whenever you put something else in the place of worship, you better check yourself. We come here that we might straighten out our lives. We come here that we might do that that's right and pleasing in the sight. That's why the prayers were prayed like they were prayed. So that all of us would know that whatever has gone wrong this past week, this past week, you can get that off of your back Go on and straighten up in the sight of God. Right. Jesus is coming soon. Look at, look at all the heat and all the water that's, that's drowning folk today. Mm -hmm. Church, every time I see uh, a, just even a, a, an animal in the water and can't get out, that troubles me. That troubles me. But you know what bothers me more? When I see us down and not realizing that God is there for us. He gave us something he didn't give the animal. He gave them life. But you and I have the ability and the responsibility of telling somebody else that Jesus sent his son to die on the cross for me. Yes, me. And, and, and living now, he still blesses me with forgiveness of things that I do. None of us ain't here so clean that we can't ask God's forgiveness for the sins that we've committed in our life. Ask Him for forgiveness. Let Him know that we want to be able to go home to live with Him throughout centuries and ages. So these women that was waiting for the bridegroom, some of them was left out. Do you know why? Because they didn't check everything. Check yourself. You can check yourself. You can look at your life and you can say, you know, I didn't do what I needed to do last Sunday. I didn't do what I needed to do last Wednesday. I didn't do what I needed to do this morning when I woke up. We have to thank him. We have to let him know. God, I thank him. And I know you don't have to let me stay here. But I thank you for letting me be here. We can die any moment. We could. Do you know something else? You know something else? We can live a long time that we give ourselves to be living. God controls all of that. God controls all of that. And I want you to see this because it's very important to me that everybody that's religious is not religiously right. Not everybody is religiously right. That's right but God didn't tell us to come down here and beat up on people. Right. He told us to go into all of the world and teach what? The gospel. Right. Yes. You're not going there telling them, yeah, I know you ain't going. You don't know where you are going. Right. Because all of us can do what God wants us to do and get it done. Amen. I want to
to say, I want to say that we have many, many folk that are trying their best to go. Paul says in, in Romans chapter 12, if you got it, in Romans chapter 12, I want you to put it up there if you got it, so we can show you something very, very important. In Romans chapter 12, here we go. I beg you, that's all he's saying. Beseech just that you mean, I beg you. I beg you, by the mercy, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you do what? You present your body. Now, what you going to present it to if you're not here? Well, we have to present something to God when we come to worship Him. Say that. Present your body a living sacrifice. How do you want it, Lord? Holy. I want you to be holy. Yes, we must be holy. That's what he said. Present it as a holy body. And give it to him as a reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed. You can't transform yourself. You can't do it. It has to be done by heaven. And be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is that good and perfect will of God is. Be transformed. Have you been transformed? Have you given God that that you owe him? Last week we talked about David. David said, I just want to share it with you, put it with this one. David said last week, after he went and tried to build a, 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 a building for God that we might use it to worship with. And he says, here's what I want. I want to get some lumber from you. And I want to borrow some of the stuff that you got. Uh, let me have some of the stuff that you got. And the other king said, go get what you you want. Some of us can borrow tools and we never take the tool back. <laughs> this man said, you don't have to borrow it. It's there. It's there for you. And David said, no, I want to pay you for what I've come, I've come to do. I want to, I want to build an altar for the Lord. I want people to be able to come out and worship and do what's pleasing and acceptable in the sight of God. The man said, it's there. It's that. Let, just go get it. I've got, I've got oxes out there, oxen, oxen out there. Right. And if you need to use my oxen, and, and you need to use whatever it is to take it so you can get the work done, take it. It's, it's yours to get. David took his time. David said, no. Nah. No, I can't do that. Just take it and go out on my own. He said, what I want to do. Pay you for it. He said, I told you, it's free. It's for your use. It's free. You can use it. David said it like this. I will not give to my God nothing that didn't cost me something. Well, did y'all hear that? Here's a man that the other king and said, it's out there, you get whatever you want and take it with you and do the very best you can for the Lord. He said, again, it's free. He kept saying, no, I don't want it like that. I'm not going to give my God nothing that I didn't sacrifice. We have to sacrifice. Time, yes sir, time, time needs to be sacrificed. We need to let others know that we love you and we're concerned about what you're concerned about, but for sure, know that God wants you to do these things. Prove what is good and acceptable in the sight of God. That perfect will of God. Then he says in verse number three, watch what he says. Look good now. This is really important. For I say, I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly. You know, we may be dressed 
dice. We may look dice. We may uh, sing dice, pray dice. But you know, we're talking to God. Amen. All Amen. this goes to God. Amen. We're here today not to just show off what we got. No. Yeah. Not to say, I got more money than you got. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? But there's a portion of what God has given you that belongs to God. Yes. Church, you think about it. Whatever you did this past week, I'm talking about this past week. Whatever we've done this past week, and we did not do it by the love of God. We didn't help people that we could help. That ought to be on my conscience if I did it. That ought to be one thing that I'd be saying, God, did, did I go through everything I need to go through? Did, did I pass somebody and I saw them struggling and, and going on? Well, we look at folk and we think, I used to do that. Why well, don't you remember some of that and help folk when you were going along? We need to help people. We need to realize that God wants all of us to be saved. You know God don't want anybody lost. Amen. You know that? Hell is there because they won't listen to God. And that's why hell is there. Amen, brother. And all of us can go to hell if we don't listen to God. Amen. Now you think I'm cussing. You better look at the Bible and tell us. It tells us. That if we don't do God's will. Man was saying, well, I just think a church is a church and all churches belong to God. That's not what the Bible says. Why do you think? Why do you think that Jesus said upon this rock, I will build my church? That's my wife right behind this cup right here. That's my wife. And you don't have to worry about it. I done told you who she is. Yeah. Well, you don't have to get up there and say, hey, hey, sister, let me ask you a question. Hey, sister, are you married? I just told you she's my wife. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to fight over. She can tell you whose husband is hers. Mm -hmm. What are you trying to say, Brother Shaw? I'm saying so many of us got out of my marriage <coughs> in the gut. Yeah. Some of us, you know where your hand is? I got to get home cooked. What was you doing all day yesterday? Yeah. Fixing food. Trying to have something to eat today. I'm saying to us, it's time that we all realize we all make mistakes. Yeah. We all wrong sometimes. And not to be every day. But then when you know somebody needs help, help them. When you know somebody is in sin, the best help you can give a person is the word of the Lord. Well, Jesus it was who said, come unto me all ye that labor Mama can't do it. Your father can't do it. Your uncle, your aunt, she can't do it. You need the hand of God and the Holy Spirit to guide you in all truth. So God said Christ. God said Christ. That you and I can be redeemed from an ugly life. I'm saying this today because there's so many folk dying. Excuse me for saying it. I'm not just trying to plant this in somebody's face. We all know who had passed in our family. Yeah. I tell you this much. We all need to help and encourage others to hang on in that. Yeah. Hang in there. God will bless us because we teach our children. And then our children want to be taught. We all know how to help our 
children become better servants in school, in college, at home, and workers for the Lord. There's a whole lot of people. A lot of people. You see the people on the rooftop want somebody to get them down in all that flooded water. This happened. It happened down in New Orleans. And they haven't, somebody said it this morning, they haven't got over that yet in New Orleans. They still haven't got over it. And this happened. Man was drowned out here in the lake not too long ago. Hell. And then some folk, they're so wrapped up in reading them in. And you see, and you see somebody struggling. And you, you probably couldn't have gotten there. But your heart was in the right spot. You wanted to go do what you could. Think your life over right now. You just you, you, you just think about the things that you overlooked. And you want God to not overlook you. We must get out and tell the world. Therefore, let us say, I'm all right where I am. You sure? Are you sure? You're all right. I say to us, I say to us, being morally moving, being morally good, will not take you to heaven by itself. Amen. There's another law right beside it. To be morally good is good, but it won't take you to heaven until you obey from the heart that form of doctrine that was delivered unto you. Being then made free from sin, you become a servant of righteousness. Are you right? Have you forgiven those that you need to forgive? There's so much hatred in homes today, and I'm talking about in homes we live in, in some places. Yeah. What are you going to do? Forgive and forget it. That's what we need to do. I'm begging everybody here today to look at yourself. If there is anything in the way, move it out of the way. And turn it over to God. Ask Him to forgive you. And when you see that God is concerned, Cornelius learned and he did what was right. Gave much alms to the people. But he was doing that before he became a Some folk are morally good. They're the one right there. They're the one right there. And there are many others we can read about in the Bible right? that did much good for other people. No, don't blame those virgins that thought about bringing enough oil so they could follow the bridegroom. Don't blame them for not giving their oil up. They didn't know how far the bridegroom was going. And they needed light. They didn't have cars with lights on them and headlamps and all of that. But what they did have was their lamps. And they had oil that they might be able to follow the bridegroom. Are you trying to follow the bridegroom? Do you want somebody else to follow them? That room in the kingdom. Brother Howard used to sing that song, and I used to love to hear him sing. There's room in the kingdom. There's room in the kingdom. For all of us. And there's no big eyes and you use in the Lord's church. None in the church. The church belongs to the Lord, and He's the one that purchased it with His own blood. Not only that, not only that, but He wants us as members of the church. So live when people see us and say, You know, you have a, a, a good, courteous life. And you act like you love the Lord. Right. You have a good way of expressing yourself to be with the Lord. Let me tell you something. Our life, our life is to be a life to show those <laughs> that don't know what God's will is. And then remember this. You can't save them. Right. I say, you can't not save them. The word. Blessed is the man that heareth these sins of mine 
Here's a catch. And do them. You get that? You got to do it. And you got to stick with it. Be thou faithful. How long? Unto death. And I'll give you a crown of life. That faded. Not away. If you're here. And you thought over your life. Every day is a search day. All of us in here. Every day. When you wake up in the morning, it's time for you to search yourself through the night. Right. Well, yeah. When you get ready to go to bed at night, it's time for you to search yourself for what you've done today. We're going to have to give an account of every single thing we've done. And if you've already repented of things that you know you did, you have to go back to God is not forgetful. He is not a forgetful God. But I know this much. He's a loving and a forgiving God. He loves me. He loves you. He will love those out there that right now could use some help. They drunk. Some of them are. Some of them are snoring. Amen. We don't care because that's their habit. We ought to care because God made them like he made us. You know what the good thing about it? When God looked and saw what Adam and Eve had done, after making Adam and Eve and he told them what not to do, you remember? God wants us to remember that. That he made us in his image. That is the image that you're living in God. Is it right? I want you to think about it. You've heard the truth. What do you want to do? I want to make sure that my slate is clean. And when I got up this morning, I said, God, I, I think I was up at five this morning thanking God for my life. My life. I went in and I peeked in on my wife. She was breathing. I thought that my dog. He was breathing. And I just put my hand right here. I said, I'm blessed. I feel it. But it's still moving. Feed it! Because I know he had his hands open and protected me from a lot of things. So don't let the world make you turn in the wrong direction. Turn in the right direction. You heard his word. Do you believe the word? Don't look at yourself and say, I, I, I know I'm, I'm just as good as anybody else. You don't know that. The only person that knows who's better than somebody else said what they said back to you, wrong, wrong thing. I ask us, if you need to repent of a sin, repent. And ask God's forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Confess your fault one to another. Mm -hmm. Confess it one to another. You can even tell somebody, I need you to pray for them. I've sinned. And that person don't have to know what you did. That's the truth. He doesn't have to know. She doesn't have to know. I don't have to know. All we have to know is that we have a God who sits high and looks low. God wants you and I to tell the world we are planning to come home and be with Him. We want to go to heaven. We want to do what's right. We invite, we invite you to ask God's forgiveness. Once you have your sins washed away, he won't do like a lot of us do. I told you you were going to do it again. I told you we all do sin. We all have shortcomings. And you don't have to, you know what, you don't have to tell anybody what you've done. That's the good thing. About it. When you ask God's forgiveness, he'll forgive you. But you got it. says, I need you to come with me. That means you're going up like Elijah. He went up and those that was waiting for him to go out of sight can't do nothing about it. Come to Christ. Have 
we sing the song. We invite you to come. Thank you, Lord. schedule has changed on the job, and now they've got me um, uh, working Friday, Saturday, Sunday again, but this time um, it's from 11 uh, p.m. to 11 a.m., so it takes about an hour and 25 minutes to get back home, so it's going to push me past the, the time of worship on Sunday, so just, I haven't talked to them about it yet.
doctors to yes. get them through what they're going through. Yes. And Father, just get them through what they need to go through. And Father, bless all the ones that's just going through headaches and pains and just part of life. I mean, just bless them that they get through them without hurt, harm, or danger. Father, bless our guests that they might have got something out of the service that just touched their heart and just make them understand that this is something different. That they might come to ask, what may I do to understand what this church is different than other churches. And Father, bless all of us that we may go through life and try to bring everybody else a little closer to your word. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. amen. Now we come to our service that we should have always broken by and shed blood. Can I ask you to remain in your seats as I read the scripture, please? I'll read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 30. And it reads, For I received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. How the same man also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup of New Testament in my blood, this do ye, as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For often you just bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, who shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drank it unworthily, he is in dragging damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come humble myself before you, eternal Father. Thanking you for your daughter's son who died that we might have a right to eternal life. Father, we come before you as you bless this bread and to bless this cup. And to bless those of us that we take up, Father, that we understand the reason why we are doing so. These blessings which are doing so in Jesus Christ's name.
Now I'm going to call the service for me to give back to the Lord. I will read 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. And it reads, Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given orders to the church of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prompted him, that there be no gathering when I come. Let us pray. Father, once again we approach your throne, Father. Thank you for jobs and whatever income that we got coming in, Father, that we may be able to give back to you. At this time, Father, may you bless these offerings that they go to spread the gospel, education of the church. In Christ Jesus' name, I pray that's all. Amen. 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 Please acknowledge the white bands on the end of the uh, front here to place your offerings in. <clears throat> At this time, before I acknowledge the guests, I want to thank Brother Shaw for a wonderful, wonderful message. We oftentimes, a Christian, first thing to run out is her faith. We find ourselves near to our destination, but further away from God. We have to uh, we have to be aware that you know that all is a symbol of our faith. You know you can live good all your life, but run out of faith before it's over with. And what did you live for? Amen. Thank you, Brother Shaw. At this time, we're going to acknowledge our guests. Those of you who have come to be a part of our family today, we want you to know that you are our honored guests. Amen. And we welcome you anytime and every time these doors open again. It's good to see my brothers from Gainesville. Man, it's been a while, but it's good to see you here. So I know you're still hard-fighting soldiers, amen? All right. If there's any of you who would like to stand at this time and state your name and let us know uh, anything you want us to know about the service this morning or about your, your, your reason for being here to see us this morning. We want to appreciate you. We want to love on you just as much as we can, but we'd like to know who you are. My name is Daniel Jarrett. This is my wife, Burgess. We're members of uh, Frogmore Church of Christ in McKinney. Okay. As well as Brother Eric Jackson. Uh, it's Amen. so good to see you guys. Amen. The pandemic has kind of separated us a little bit. And we have not as, we're not as sociable as we used to be. But it's good to see you here. And come back whenever you know you feel necessary. Y'all know who I am. I'm Brother Harold. Yeah. That's Brother Harold. Yeah.
It's so good to be here this morning. Amen. Amen. We'll be back to see you all. It's been a long time as you said. But God is still in the blessed business. Oh, God is still in the blessed Thank you. Brother Sean and I go back a long way. We used to work out at that juvenile center years ago. That's when I first, I might have met Brother Sean before then, but I know we worked out there together. And it's so good to be here. And thank you all for the service and the hustle God. Amen. Amen. But it's definitely clear. I just want to have, we had several prayers in, in the interest of the university. Right. And, and, and right after that, we talked. Yeah. And said, God bless you. Okay. And that God hand you. Oh, yeah. And uh, I think sister lost her life and death. But we, we, we still praying for you. Amen. Amen. I didn't know it at the time because many of us who know you to admit that it was news to me. Uh, I'm not here every Sunday, so sometimes I miss some things, but I want you to know that you have my sincere condolences. So, uh, it's one thing about when we lose someone in the Lord, is we know that their labor is not in vain. So we can be joyous on that, even though we have to deal with the fact that they're no longer here with us. We can be considerate enough to give them their time with God. Amen. 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 At this time, there are no more visitors who would like to. Oh, before I, before I sit down, I would like to read something from Sister Ruby Watkins. Um, she says to the Grand Avenue family, "Thank you for thinking of our family during this passing of my brother." It would order. Your cards, your calls, your visits, and your prayers were sincerely appreciated. In Christian love, Ruby Watson and family. All right. So let us Amen. consider Amen. Sister Watkins and the passing of her nephew as well in our prayers. Amen. Amen. God is good. Amen. And he's good all the time. So we have to we have to understand that he doesn't make mistakes. Everything he does is according to his purpose. We have to be loving enough to accept his will. Amen. Amen. All right, let us pray. Most kind and merciful Heavenly Fathers, once more and again, we come humbly bow before thy throne of grace and mercy. Dear God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are so much a God and so loving a God that you allow us to have our very being, even when we don't do things the way that we should all the time. Father, we thank you for the ones that you've allowed us to love and for those who have loved us. We just ask that you give those who have lost loved ones the comfort that only you can give. Father, we ask that you help us to become closer as a family. Yes. That we learn to love one another even through the hard times. When the times when we don't do, when we don't always agree with one another, help us to continue to love one another. Even so, Father, we ask that you be with those who have lost loved ones. Father, we know that we didn't come here to live forever, not on this time side of life, but we're just passing through. So help us to be ready when it's our time. Help us to do the things that you have commanded us to do as a church. Help us to be able to reach those who may not know Christ that we may be able to teach them the things that you've shown us. Amen. Father, in love, in patience, in commitment and diligence, that we do all in the name of Christ. 
Now be with us as we prepare to leave this building, but not your presence. Let us walk the walk and talk the talk. Let us live that others may be able to see Christ in us and ask, what must I do? It is in Christ Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen. 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 All right, those of you who are um, <clears throat> members of the body of Christ here at Grand Avenue, who are planning on being a part of the personal evangelism and KTSS, let us meet up here in the front.